think, oh, it wasn't those great years. If only we could have been there. Ecclesiastes says if we look backwards, it's never out of wisdom because the best is yet still to come. So, Father, I thank you. And thank you for our dear brother, Paul Cain, who has been used and is used mightily by your spirit and has seen things that we have not yet seen this generation. Mm. And Father God, we long to hear, to value the move of God because we know that it is your heart to bring it again and to bring it upon the past and awaken and release the future. And so Father, in Jesus' name, we just dedicate these next few moments to listen, to learn, to receive, to hear, and to do. And we declare that out of this, the God of peace will be with us. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath our feet. And so we agree with your word and agree with your ways. And we pray that the, re- the blessing of the Lord now would rest upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Are you turned on? Yep. Uh, yes. Praise the Lord. Are you turned on? <laughs> I'm going to read, we're going to talk about specifically the 1947 to 57 uh, segment of the Great Healing Revival. My only claim to fame is I was born and then it ended. (laughs) It wasn't my fault, Paul assures me. But uh, during that time, there was a newspaper that went a little before and continued after called The Voice of Healing. And I want to read a couple of articles that were in there. In fact, some of them will go up on the screen because we found the archives of them. And I'm going to... But you, you were sharing with me, Paul, an interesting qualification that to get a miracle recorded or healing in the voice of healing, it wasn't just somebody called up and said, I had a great healing in my meeting. Mm-hmm. It had to be documented or... Well, there was a wonderful uh, quality um, employed by the voice of healing. They insisted on having a verification either from a doctor, which was almost impossible to get back in those days, the early days, 47, you know, through the 50s. But um, uh, there there were a number of uh, documentations from medical uh, professionals. But uh, each testimony had to be verified by a pastor or an eyewitness or someone uh, that's, that they knew, yeah. uh, and I thought that was a wonderful uh, thing. Uh, and so far as making the, the the testimonies, which were outlandish, it made the testimonies believable. Yes. You know? Otherwise, uh, it w- it could be uh, uh, just a lot of uh, emotional uh, things. But the, the healings were all tested. Yeah. And verified. And I noticed in reading some of these old articles, you would say you can contact my pastor at such and such to verify right. it. Mm-hmm. So that explains that. This one came out of Los Angeles. It was in, you can put this, it'll be the first one up on the screen. But uh, in September 1951, you won't be able to read it, I don't think, but um, uh, I'll read out loud. It says, uh, the gift of discernment. We, be, we praise the Lord here at Calvary Temple for the wonderful meetings which has been conducted by our dear brother Paul Kane. This youthful evangelist from Texas is truly on fire for God and is being mightily used by him. He does not mince words, nor does he sugarcoat his messages. Brother Kane has a real burden for souls. The gift of discernment, not only discerning diseases, but general discernment operates at times through Brother Kane in a striking manner. He will point people out in the congregation now and then and as they come in the healing line and then tell them exactly what their affliction is and point out other things in their life which immediately brings their faith into operations and miracles of deliverance take place. A woman suffering from arthritis, unable to walk, was carried to the platform by the ushers and Paul Cain prayed for her and she walked off the platform praising God. Another confined to a wheelchair, able to take only a few steps on crutches, also walked off the platform, praising God. And then last, we talked about this last week. Two women were told to go home and vomit up their cancers. And they did return in a few days with the cancers in alcohol. Yeah. Mm. That must have been an amazing thing to bring the the cancers. 
I think we covered this last on the last uh, interview, but uh, a pathologist uh, examined uh, that growth with his, because of the insistence of uh, her family and her pastor, uh, which was the superintendent of the Italian Assemblies of God. And um, so this pathologist said that it was miraculous because uh, whatever happened when, uh, when the tumor or the cancer octopus type with the tentacles came loose, on all the tentacles it had a, a safe margin. And wow. so it was completely eliminated the cancer altogether, which was super, supernatural. Yeah, that is super, supernatural. There, there's this article in uh, October 1951, and it's uh, a broken leg, instantly healed. Mm -hmm. I attended the tent revival in Riverside, California, where evangelist Paul Kane conducted his healing services. I came to the service with a cast on my left leg, which I had only been wearing for two days. The leg was broken and had torn ligaments. The doctors had placed a cast from my hip to my ankle. Brother Kane, through discernment, told me what had happened. He also pointed to my mother and told her what her afflictions were. He told the church we, where we were from. He told her the church we were from. I was shocked because no one in the service knew us. Brother Kane had no natural way of knowing these things. Yet he said, "Mother, does this give you faith?" Mother answered, yes. Then he said, go home, take this cast off tonight. She obeyed and I was healed. The swelling left instantly. I returned the next night carrying the cast, walking very normally, and the great crowd rejoiced at the miracle. My mother is now saved. This great meeting turned my entire family to God. Praise the Lord for his supernatural gifts in Brother Cain's ministry. Mm. Well, yeah. the same miracle happened for this Mrs. Ansalico. Uh, her entire family uh, came with her to the meeting, accompanied her as she carried this jar of alcohol with the octopus type uh, cancer. And every one of them uh, received Christ and were born again. Every, every wow. one of her children. It wow. was wonderful. Now, she said that you, you stated this uh, by the gift of discernment, being able to tell what was wrong and where they were from, activated her faith. Mm -hmm. And did you see that? Be well, uh, the best way I can describe it is kind of being able to tune in on the cause to effect a cure. But in, in between that, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so it was, I felt the Word of the Lord uh, seemed to show me or tell me that this accident happened, and uh, this is the way it happened, and showed me that her mother was uh, not converted, and uh, and uh, so she was brought to Christ through this. And then the next night, I remember um, a registered nurse uh, accompanied her to the meeting, and she, the registered nurse, verified this testimony along with the uh, uh, First Assembly of God pastor, Charles Gold, I believe it was at that time. That is just amazing. I want to read, this is in the same uh, article about mm -hmm. a growth that disappeared instantly. Uh, Paul Kane prayed for my little daughter. This is uh, Mrs. Darlene Brown. Paul Kane prayed for my little daughter, Darlene Brown, at uh, Calvary Temple, Los Angeles. As soon as I heard of the things that were happening in the services there, I decided to go. The very first night, Brother Kane, who had never seen me, be, be, seen me before, pointed me out to the audience and told me everything that was wrong with me. I had never heard of such supernatural things, for I was not a Christian, and he told me so. He also told me what church I belonged to. This convinced me. Then, by my astonishment, he said, Mother, your child has a growth. Is that also correct? Yes, I replied. Then he said, bring the child to me. Jesus is the best surgeon. He said, the doctors have planned an operation. Is this not also true? It was very true. And then before praying, he said, God revealed to me before entering the service that this child's growth would disappear. And then he prayed and said, audience, it's all gone. I looked and through my tears saw the growth vanishing. After two minutes, no trace could be found. Dr. Small, the surgeon, said, 
What on earth has happened? This is truly amazing. I told him it was Jesus. I am now saved through this miracle. This can be confirmed by thousands at Calvary Temple. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. I, I remember that very well. Uh, she was um, a beautiful little Shirley Temple girl. I mean, you know, just absolutely stunning. And um, so uh, we had nurses in the meeting, and uh, before the meeting was over, they, before I'd finished ministering, they took her back to the prayer room and examined her, and um, uh, the growth was on her hip, and, and uh, it had completely uh, vanished. There wasn't any trace or uh, any lump or anything there, and they were planning surgery. So, wow. So the Lord... Um, uh, simply is the great surgeon and the great physician. Now she said that you, you had uh, said that the Lord had shown you this before entering the service. Can you tell us about, I've, I really have two questions. One is, what were these healing meetings like mm -hmm. during this move of God sweeping California and mm -hmm. the rest of the nation? And how did you get prepared? What was, mm -hmm. what was happening as you got ready? Well, I think the, there were many varied ways that the different men of God had pre prepared. But uh, insofar as uh, my preparation, I would drive uh, from California, I mean, from uh, Los Angeles, California, to Thousand Oaks. And uh, we had uh, a friend, uh, Lieutenant Cyrus Johnson, uh, with some of his friends in the audience tonight. And uh, he um, uh, offered me. Uh, a place to stay and, and to pray, and I had all 90 acres to myself and stayed in the Quonset hut, and I would fast and pray and then go into the meeting. In those days, we drove on Ventura Boulevard, was uh, was 101, and that was all the highway we had to get out here for the most, most of the way. And so I would drive after the meetings at night and come out here up above Lake Sherwood and the, and the uh, in the hills there, mm -hmm. and uh, just fast and pray. And uh, back in those days, I weighed 128 pounds, and no matter how much I fasted, I couldn't uh, lose weight. And then no matter how much uh, I ate, I couldn't gain weight. It seemed like I had a, a, a locked uh, in uh, uh, metabolism. Uh -huh. And so I've, I started asking for prayer that I would gain weight all over the nation. And so pretty soon I, I began to put on weight. I went from 128 to 140 and then on and on and on. And finally I weighed 220 pounds. <laughs> and so I said, oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> help me to get in touch with the church and all those people so they can stop praying. So. I, I had to come home after service and just roll on my tummy uh, to get uh, comfortable enough to even go to bed. I'd have to get up and rest in a chair before I could go to bed. You know, that's, yeah. a, that's a joke. So, no, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So the Lord would show you, though, miracles were coming or people were going to be at the meetings? Or... Yes, just, just like the testimony of, of, of uh, Jerome Taylor. When they brought the little boy, uh, they uh, virtually kidnapped him from the uh, polio contagion ward back in those days because uh, all, all children, everyone had polio, had to be quarantined. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, uh, they wrapped him in a blanket and took him out without the doctor's permission, brought him to the meeting. I saw all that in the afternoon. And okay. so when I got up in a, to minister that night, uh, I prefaced the service by telling them that the Lord has shown me a number of people that would, would, would be healed. Uh -huh. And so I saw the surrounding circumstances and everything. And then all of a sudden I looked back and uh, we were in this building that would, would uh, uh, accommodate about 3,000 people. But I saw this couple, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Taylor, sitting all the way back uh, on the left-hand side of this uh, uh, auditorium, and, uh, which was uh, Paul Rader Tabernacle, later called Calvary Temple. Well, anyway, I pointed them out, and I, I told them the, the vision I'd had. And uh, they were uh, spellbound, of course, and told them the time they took the baby out of the hospital. And, uh, 
So uh, the mother tried to stand. She was so um, uh, so taken back by all of this, mm -hmm. and, and the baby just slid out of the uh, the blanket, and his little feet uh, uh, hit the floor, and one, one of his legs was just uh, uh, really incredibly uh, small, much smaller than the other, like you know polio sometimes uh, uh, leaves a person, and. Uh, so he began to step into the aisle uh, and walk down the carpeted, sloping aisle. And everyone that could see him, hundreds of people would see him. And that little limb began to grow and be the, as normal as the other. The lip went away. And by the time he got to the front of that a long auditorium, the big auditorium, he ran all the way back to his parents. and they. Wow. It was one of the most glorious things you've ever seen, you know. And uh, we're going to see those things again. That's the only reason we're talking about them. Yeah, yeah. Th this is a preview of coming events. Yeah. 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 The all the all new healing revival. This time we're going to do it right. Yeah. 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 Can I can I read that little her report? Because I, I don't know what you can about that. It's awfully small <laughs> type. So. So a little boy came up to me one time. He was kind of smart aleck, you know. And he said, my mama tells me you can read minds. I bet you can't read mine. And I said, I'm sorry, son. I really can't. He said, well, why not? I said, because I can't read small print. <laughs> yeah. I'll read it. You can edit that. All right, now, that's, uh, that's, that's the joy of the Lord in healing our soul. Yeah. I, I wanted to read, because this, her story just matched. It matched, mm -hmm. but it also came from a mother's heart. We took our little two-year-old baby, seriously afflicted with polio, from the hospital against the doctor's orders and brought him to the great healing campaign at Calvary Temple in Los Angeles. <laughs> Brother Kane had never seen us before and knew nothing about the baby's condition, for he was well wrapped up in blankets. However, he told the crowd the minute he entered the pulpit that there were a few people the Lord had told him would be healed. It was so wonderful that out of hundreds waiting to be prayed for, he should call me. He told me what time I had taken the baby from the hospital, which the Lord had, super, which the Lord had supernaturally revealed to him through the Holy Spirit. He knew the baby's age and also all his condition. I thought I would faint at this prophet of God revealed such secrets. I didn't know that God was that real. I do now. The, this great miracle is known to many thousands who heard Paul call, Cain and saw the gift of God work through him that night. My darling child was healed instantly. The boy jumped up and down. He walks. He leaps. Thanks be to God he is healed. Mrs. Jerain Taylor. Mm. So, amazing. Yeah. Now, you said there was in one... In one short amount of time, you had done like 50 different meetings up and down the coast of California. Mm -hmm. Can you, was there just, there were lots of healing meetings going, there was? Uh, it seemed as though that it was a season for healing. And like, uh, there are certain types of healing uh, that uh, would occur uh, one right after the other for a year, uh, for two years. And once when I was out here in some of my almost silent years, as David uh, the psalmist said, which would have been silent but for the Lord, but while I was shut in and all that, I would uh, hear the Lord's voice telling me to go to Camarillo State Hospital or to uh, a number of the state hospitals out here and some of the private mental hospitals. And it just seemed like the Lord was specializing in healing uh, uh, Christians with nervous breakdowns and, and who... Uh, were uh, schizoid and paranoid, you know, and suffered from schizophrenia and uh -huh. paranoia. Uh -huh. And uh, some, you know, uh, uh, people back in those days didn't believe that Christians could be demon-possessed. I'm not saying that I do, but uh, uh, I think a Christian, uh, someone said, can have anything they want. <laughs> you know? Unfortunately, yes. And if they open the door yeah. uh, for this, well, that was happening. But we, uh, one of the most remarkable testimonies of all times is the Gene Rayborg story. That's on our website, uh, www.paulcain.org. And uh, uh, thousands and thousands of people have heard this. Women in prisons 
who didn't respect any of the, the visitor speakers or anything like that. And uh, they would hear Jean give her testimony and, and uh, they put out their cigarettes and uh, stopped using foul language. And, and uh, the majority of them would, uh, who were not you know, saved would confess Jesus as Savior. It's, it's just a most wonderful wow. testimony. I hope that everybody that hears this uh, or views this uh, interview will go to that website and read the Jane, uh, the Jean Raymore testimony. But it just seemed like that year, mm -hmm. I was in Patton State Hospital. I wasn't in there as a patient, but yeah. I was in there you know, praying for <laughs> yeah. people. And, there was a ward out there. I think it's been long enough I can talk about it now. That ward was called the Ward of the Forgotten Dead. And uh, I could almost weep just reminiscing about that, thinking back to um, a group of people that were inhuman uh, looking. They didn't even resemble a human being. They were like animals or anything else. And one cell in particular, I remember there were two men and a woman in a cell, and they were so insane that uh, they didn't know each other's sex or anything, so it didn't make any difference. And they were, were um, uh, naked, and uh, they would feed them by putting food on the concrete floor, which sloped, and they had a drain in the middle of it, and they would just hose them down and hose the food and, and um, fecal matter and all that uh, down the deal. And, uh, I thought I would never survive the uh, trauma uh -huh. of that. And uh, maybe somebody is here that has seen something like that, but uh, the psychiatrist in charge, uh, the head uh, psychiatrist, no pun intended, I mean the head mm -hmm. psychiatrist yeah. from, uh, from the hospital there, gave me free run of the place after uh, uh, some people were healed. and. Uh, uh, so that uh, I wasn't supposed to go through that ward, but I was able to go anywhere. And so I, you know, it wasn't like Disney's, yeah. but I just took a tour. You know, yeah, yeah. All the yeah. gates were open to me. It was just wonderful. I can't believe that those crazy things happened to me. I, I mean, know. those <laughs> those uh, wonderful things happened to me. Yeah, I guess. yeah. Well, I I was thinking about you know you had many meetings and they just would start building. You had meetings yes. in Riverside, Los Angeles, and Sacramento, and mm -hmm. what would the, there was, what would the meetings, how are the meetings different then than they are, say, today? Well, in those days we'd have uh, sometimes a prayer ramp or if it was a, uh, if there were no steps like this, we'd sit in a chair, uh, some of the events did un under the tents, the Lord's tent, and just have the people pass by with a prayer ramp and pray for them while you're sitting in chairs makes them about even with you to hold their hands. And this is the way Oral Roberts prayed for over a million people and actually wore his uh, shoulder uh, joints out. It had to be replaced because it was right shoulder because he laid his right hand oh. on over a million people. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I've had wonderful visits with him and uh, we reminisced about those things. And, yeah. Well, I know we've got... Um, I wanted to show a couple of clips because we do have a couple of clips from some of A.A. A. Allen's meetings that oh, yes. have some very similar miracles that you mm -hmm. did, and, and yet we, ha we have the imagery of it. And the first one yeah. I wanted to show, which you're all going to enjoy. Yeah. Is, Just before you show please. it, could I, uh, uh, pardon me for interrupting you. No. But uh, there's a group uh, that are very interested in um, uh, not just justice, but mercy, and they're making um, a movie, uh, uh, what do you call it, a secular movie, and uh, of course all the names of the um, innocent will be changed to protect the guilty, but uh, they're making a movie that will bring great clarity um, insofar as Brother Allen's life is concerned. Many men of God have been um, uh, demonized and uh, uh, what would you call it? I mean, uh, just, just uh, gossip and critical things. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things about uh, Brother Allen, we used to affectionately call him Triple A, and I'm in touch with uh, his uh, great granddaughter right now, and 
Um, and I'm looking forward to talking to one of his sons, or both of them that are still living. Uh, Paul doesn't remember me, but it's only because he was too young and I'm too old. Um, so anyway, uh, but we're going to make a movie and it's going to clear these things. I have a very close friend who is the, uh, uh, the head of the Board of Surgeons in South Florida, and he got a copy of the medical report, uh, the examiner, medical examiner's report, uh, after Brother A. Allen's death, and uh, he uh, uh, mocked it to scorn. He said that this was impossible for a man to die that way. And I believe the same thing. Yeah. He was a good man, and I was friends with his wife, and she told me the, the stories that convinced me that uh, he had been maligned beyond, beyond measure, and knowing what that's like, yeah. uh, I'll take it up for yeah. people. So just as it was today, it is that back then, there would be jealousies, there would be mm -hmm. murmurs, there would be, people would be accused of things. One of the things um, I, I really, Recognize the first time I saw one of his clips, which you know we've, we're still searching for a clip of yours, but one of his clips, mm -hmm. I saw this just this very bold and but yet very compassionate and full of love and faith mm -hmm. act, and and the miracles where you do the miracle, then explain what happened, versus where we tend to bring people up after they've been healed and have them explain what happened. This was let's bring you up in your condition, find out what it is in front of everybody, then we're going to pray for you, get you healed and watch the whole thing happen. And that was well, this, happening. But this was like Jesus in Acts 1, when he both began to do and to teach. He, he didn't preach until he performed a miracle and uh, you know, built the faith. Like, and, and Brother Allen, as, and some of the things we have here, you'll see that he has an ardent love for people, and he just works with them and works with them. Some of them, they can't, the, their arms are just limp and mm -hmm. you know feet and legs that can't walk but he just kept hammering yeah. away with faith quite emotional yeah. but it worked yeah and uh, yeah it's uh, someone said well uh, it was psych psychosomatic and some of these things well so what uh, th those are the ones doctors can't do anything with and they're the hardest to heal yeah no so you, uh, so that let's just from before we put this on the healing lines how would you uh, You'd see people that you're going to pray for and call them up into the healing lines. And people would come sick, and then you'd be praying for them and interviewing them. Yes. Well, that would work in different ways. Like when I'd step in and into the pulpit and, and tell the tailors and these people, you know, yeah. and, and Mrs. Lindsay that uh, you know the tumor is going to pass that, that night, and so on. It did. Uh, then we'd have the prayer line after that, you know, I would preach and then have the prayer line, and uh, sometimes uh, we would pray for the sick till uh, the wee hours of uh, the night's morning, and, and uh, that's the way we, many of us uh, uh, became unwell and, and had poor health because of that, so people would say, well, the healer's sick, you know, well, we're, we, I'm not the healer, they yeah. weren't the healer. You, you just wore your body out. Yeah, right because they just go on. Well, mm -hmm. this first clip will do, is uh, of, of a deaf man being, having his hearing restored, an older mm -hmm. gentleman, and then a woman following, they kind of gum together, a woman following who had, her jaw couldn't open. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and put the clip on. open his ears up and to heal this rupture. And I'm going to believe God to do it. Not Jesus. Here's a man that one time could hear the good Lord. Now his ears have stopped up. He needs to hear because you gave him these ears to hear with. He's come and says the evening that is the prayer it's going to happen. My belief got him right now. I just feel the spirit and the power of God all over him. Can't you see it? How many can see what God's doing for him? Oh, 
Marvelous job. <laughs> I don't think we're going to even have to finish playing. I believe it's already done. I know it is. Well, it's a job. You what? I know it's done, Don. What's done? Well, that healing was everything I requested on that card. Uh-huh. I'm completely healed. You are? God. Oh. I got my heels in the bank, I told you, boy. Yes. Yeah. Then the chair when you just eat it, no. Oh, see. The Lord heals the back back there. Yes, sir. Well, back there. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, sir. Glory be to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the hell of man. Oh, good God. This man said there for a moment ago, he said to him, he wanted to stop to him. Now, he's so wide open. God's open to see him. That's right. And he's completely healed my body. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. 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 Glory I don't find it. What is this again? Uh-uh. What was it? Well, I have two stars. Uh-huh. You don't see me like that now, no. You have so of fun. Like my arm kind of fun. Uh-huh. Just like your arm kind of bubble bubble bubble. Uh-huh. Well, look. It's all gone. I do so.
that was amazing to watch just the I, I keep getting can't get over just the doing the miracle in front mm -hmm. of everybody and just working with a person having that confidence that mm -hmm. faith would rise and did you uh, so the word of discernment would help or the faith or every minister in the healing revival was working different mm -hmm. things but that's the amazing part of it with the altar calls uh, the invitation is given and uh, because um, the unbelievers saw the miracles uh, and the presence of God uh, was uh, prevalent, you know, and uh, sometimes hundreds would come forward. Uh, you have a picture there in the Voice of Healing, I think, mm -hmm. of uh, 500 people coming to, uh, forward yeah. to accept Christ. Yeah. Uh, and uh, over in Germany, uh, we had 1,200, 1,500 people in Switzerland come to Christ in one night. And it was awesome, uh, the number that would, would come, come to the Lord. And, um, you know, the, um, uh, the early revivalist uh, that had the power of God, uh, the uh, evangelical churches were against them because of, um, they didn't believe in enthusiasm. And so this, we just saw a lot of enthusiasm yeah. there. But uh, they rejected uh, the, anything that uh, was spiritual or supernatural because it... Uh, it seemed to be associated with uh, enthusiasm. My, my. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't believe in ball games. There's too much enthusiasm. Yeah. Uh, believe me. Super Bowl, too much enthusiasm. So. Yeah, but uh, how would you not be so enthusiastic when, when something yeah. so dramatic happens? You know, I, I was in the hospital once, and, I, and a lady died that uh, was in the intensive care ward with me, and, and several patients were there. And so I was having, uh, the chaplain was a cessationist. He didn't believe, you know, in, in miracles. And so he was praying the deadest prayer for me. And I, I decided then and there, I was never going to let any of it be thy will people pray for me again. Because, you know, if it be thy will. Well, we know yeah. it's God's will to heal. You yeah. know? Uh, uh, and, and so we have to assume that. And so we go everywhere praying for everybody, assuming it's God's will to heal. Who are we to say it's not God's will to heal somebody? But anyway, we say, "Oh dear Lord, one of your uh, one of your servants is in trouble, and she died." You know, <laughs> and um, said, "Lord, uh, and this uh, brother that I'm praying for, uh, I'm, it seems that he will soon be with you and help him to cross over." And I said, "Oh, shut up!" <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> yeah. So, Pray for myself. <laughs> uh, that's not yeah. the kind of prayer of faith you want. Yeah, right. Oh, if it be thy will. Yes. So, so there were people coming uh, in ambulances? Oh, were... my, yes. In one meeting in Oklahoma City in the early days, early 50s, uh, I was with Jack Cole, uh, uh, and uh, he had uh, then the world's largest uh, tent. And he had um, an invalid tent or prayer tent that was uh, very, very large also. And so he advertised for people to be brought on uh, by ambulance from all over Oklahoma, all over Texas, everywhere. And uh, he would pay the ambulance bill one way. If they had to go back, they had to pay it themselves. So we had about 2,000 people in the invalid tent to pray for and he just knew by revelation who had faith to be healed and he'd just go from one to the other lifting him up and they would uh, walk away. It was absolutely remarkable. Tell, tell, tell me about the invalid tent because they yeah. refer to that and you just did. Well, one thing that I appreciate about Brother Allen over and above all of the, the men that prayed uh, uh, for uh, the sick and had big tents was that Brother Allen did have an invalid tent uh, adjacent to the, the, the big top where, uh, where we saw him preaching there. But he would bring the invalids and the hopeless and dying people on uh, hospital, I mean, uh, uh, hospital gurneys and uh, ambulance gurneys. So he would bring them right before the, the people on, on the prayer ramp and work uh, diligently with them until they were healed. And that was all on TV. And the advertisement was, 
miracles you will see on your TV, kind of a... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now the, it's wonderful. The, the invalid tent was a place where the, they would keep the people that were too sick to be in the yeah, meeting? the hard cases. The hard cases. The, those that might die in a public meeting, and sometimes um, more than once uh, someone would die, and uh, they didn't want that to be out in the public, which uh, is, is fine, but uh, Brother Allen, he always brought the, and the hard cases, you know, the... Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, the others, uh, most of them, would go back and pray, and if someone was healed back there, which was a, a, a heart case, they would bring them to the platform. I see, mm -hmm. I see. You told me when you first got here in California, you were, you were looking for somebody to die. Oh. Uh -huh. So that you could yes. raise them from the dead. Yeah, except myself. <laughs> well, I know. So, uh, yes, in fact, this Calvary Temple you mentioned yeah. uh, several times, uh, uh, Leroy M. Cop was the uh, uh, senior pastor, and he had a son who was a little older than me who was in uh, the mission field over in South America. And he experienced revival after fasting for 40 days, just like the healing evangelists did. And uh, he had all kinds of miracles, you know, the dumb spake and the deaf could hear. and. Um, uh, the lame walked and all that, just real miracles, but he never had anyone raised from the dead like in the third world now. Uh, but I was younger and I had such a passion to see the dead raised, you know. And um, so it was just a childlike faith. And so I asked him to pray with me that uh, uh, to raise someone from the dead. And he said, well, I will. I'll, I'll agree with you and I'll, uh, I'll pray with you for that. And, and uh, so I said, well, why don't we pray that someone will die? You know? <laughs> and he said, oh, little brother, we, we couldn't do that. That wouldn't be right. I said, well, why not? We're going to raise him from the dead. You know? <laughs> oh, I can't believe the brilliance uh, uh, I employed in those days. But anyway, uh, Finally, you can edit this too, but finally, uh, this is just for the folks here. Yeah. Finally, uh, he came to me one day and he said, Oh, Brother Paul, we, we have a live one. I mean, no, we have. He had no sense of humor at all. He uh, said, A lady in our church, her husband died, and um, they live out here on an avocado uh, ranch, and, uh, uh, and uh, she was willing for us to come out and pray for her. And so I said, well, did you tell her that, uh, you know, we're going to we, we come out and raise her husband from the dead? Said, no, I didn't have the nerve to tell her. I just told her I was coming out to pray for him. And so we went out. And in those days, they had a parlor, you know, in the old houses. And so uh, she took us into the parlor. And the body of uh, her husband was in another room. And uh, so uh, uh, Paul Cobb. Uh, Evangel Paul Cobb, he began to comfort her, you know, with um, what is St. John 14 and so on, which has nothing to do with... Uh -huh. <laughs> well, anyway, that's another yeah, story. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what... I want to preach on that sometime, yeah. you know. Anyway, um, so we sat there and I became very agitated, very impatient, you know. I was just really popping with faith. And I said, Sister, uh, did Brother Paul Cop tell you why we've come here? And uh, I was very bold, you know, ignorant too. Uh, so he, she said, "Well, you came to." He said, "You came to pray for me." And he said, "Brother Paul, I, I just told her we came to pray for her and comfort her, and I didn't tell her what you wanted to do." And I said, "Lady, we're here to raise your husband from the dead," and she fainted. I mean, she just. <laughs> Slid back on the sofa and fainted. So we thought we were raising her from the dead. Yeah. And finally, you know, slapping her pretty little face, and she came around, slapping her hand, you know. And so she said, "What did, what, what did you say?" <laughs> I said, "We're going to raise your husband from the dead." She said, "Oh no, you wouldn't do that, would you? I wouldn't have him back for anything." <laughs> and so, that, that's all that, that, that's all that saved me from being, uh, you know being infamous or, or famous yeah, yeah. For, for raising dead people. Uh.
This, Isn't that good? That is good. That is good. Yeah. So, you know, Mary Hart did good like a medicine, <laughs> but I think we gave you an overdose on that. Right. Uh, this, this next clip of A.A. A. Allen with uh, a miracle of a, of a man who is deaf and mute. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he, um, it reminds me of a story that happened with you. So. That is a deaf mute. He graduated from a high school on the West Coast. But nevertheless, both of his ears are deaf. He's been deaf all his life. He writes on a piece of paper so people can know what he's saying. He's been in this particular tent meeting here for night after night for weeks. How many people know here that he's a deaf mute? Say man if you know it. He's mingled in the camp. Met him at a restaurant last night, and I talked to him again and again. But I talked to him on paper. I write, he reads it, and he writes back. He's a man that holds down a job, wants his automobile. It's about all he can do with his deafness. God's going to open them both up. Tonight. How many believe it? More that's never heard in his life. This is your night. He can read my lips. This is your night. Your night. He's going to open both ears. Do you believe it? I want everybody that believes in prayer, raise your hand to heaven. This is your night. You devil that binds this boy. I curse this deafness and I curse this dumbness. These ears must open. I see them leaving. It's coming out of the right ear right now. Hello. How do you do? I'm sorry. He says, oh. Huh? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said it so loud. Do you know God's done something with this boy? Amen. Amen. They're open. Do you know they're open? I'm going to try first this little whistle. Now, what would they allow? Yeah, Huh? What? Praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. This is my watch. Quick, quick, yeah. Sit here. Sit, 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 sit. Everybody ought to raise your hands. You ought to please God for this great victory. Everybody in this camp meeting is known for weeks. Everybody's prayed for this boy. Seen it vulnerable? Okay. Didn't I tell you Jesus is going to heal it? Now he's going to have to learn how to talk. He's learned how to read lips, but he's never heard anybody talk. Now you're going to talk. You're going to talk. We're going to start. Amen. 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 That isn't bad. The first try. Amen. Amen. Let's start. One. Man. Two. Three. Yeah. 
I want us to watch that, and then you can tell the story that happened to you. Let's go ahead. Began to fight me, pulled my hands away, and grabbed his ears, and started using curse words. And, and you know, we we all know those words, but we don't use them. And uh, he did. You know? Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> and so it scared me because I was just very young, innocent. Uh, you know, I hear I've heard a lot of those things on TV now, but this is really bad. You know. And uh, so um, uh, he said, what and, uh, did you do to me? You know, and he just kept holding his ears and screaming. And so um, uh, someone, must have been a family member, came up alongside him and said he lost his hearing uh, in the war, uh, maybe in the Korean theater, I don't know. Or, and uh, uh, so I said, well, uh, take him back to the prayer room and, and get him saved, and then we'll, you know, hear his testimony. So he went back and got saved, and uh, uh, then the next night he came back and brought his army papers, the discharge papers. He had a medical, uh, honorable medical discharge, and he, uh, the medical papers uh, showed how deaf he was and how uh, impaired he really was, and so it was a miracle, you know, that that he could hear yeah. again. And so it was much like that. Yeah, it's just that total shock. Oh, yeah, this, this guy, this man screamed louder because he wasn't Christian. This guy was a Christian. <laughs> <or something. laughs> but I can imagine how painful that would be. Yeah, know? I want to read, uh, there is a, a Califor California woman passes a 15-pound tumor. Mm -hmm. I had been suffering uh, for months with pain in my stomach but being a Christian, I trusted God for my healing. However, I did consult a doctor to the determine the trouble, and he told me I had a 15-pound tumor, and unless I had immediate surgery, I might bleed to death from the pre pressure. October 18th, and this was uh, 1954, um, I attended the Paul Kane revival at Calvary Temple at Los in Los Angeles. Brother Kane pointed me out in the audience and told me that I had this tumor and that God would heal me. I knew his brother Cain prayed for me that my tumor was healed. And the next day, October 19th, I told the doctor that Jesus had healed me. He scoffed and insisted upon x-ray. In the next three days, I lost 18 pounds and five and a half inches in my waistline. And in seven days, I lost 12 pounds and nine and a half inches around my waist. Then the doctor saw the x-ray and said, you amaze me. But I have to admit that God has healed your tumor. I can't find, I can find no trace of it. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? It is wonderful. Amen. Can you tell us uh, about that event and what happened? Yeah, it's, I remember she was sitting uh, in the back and uh, my she was so huge. Uh, one of the doctors she went to in the early stages uh, said that she uh, was pregnant and having twins. And uh, back in those days, they had absolutely no way of really telling the baby's sex, let alone uh, whether it was really a baby or not sometimes. And so she uh, lived on that assumption for a short while, and then uh, another doctor uh, thought it was a, a tumor. And I remember saying I thought it was a water tumor, you know, and that uh, uh, she thought she was having a baby because mm -hmm. the water, uh, you know, broke, and that it was a tumor that... Uh, Wow. That broke. Wow. It's wonderful. That's a wonderful. Anyway, the only discouraging thing about that, her husband uh, sold grave lots, you know, cemetery plots, and uh, always uh, made me feel bad, you know. 
Uh, but anyway, she was healed, and uh, I always felt like after uh, they separated, uh, before she was healed, that he wanted her to buy a grave lot. Oh, no. <laughs> another dissatisfied yeah, customer. No, just another, uh, just another attempt at humor, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read this. Uh, you, you mentioned Lieutenant Cyrus Johnson, who was part of the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, and, Cyrus C. Johnson, Lieutenant Cyrus C. Johnson was Lieutenant of the LAPD, and uh, he uh, became fascinated with supernatural and came to uh, the William Branham meeting and fell in love with Brother Branham's uh, ministry and fell in love with the supernatural. And then I followed Brother Branham uh, uh, Brother Branham introduced me that night because I, I went on and carried on with the meeting as uh, we usually did for him back in those days. And so he witnessed, uh, uh, you know, a short uh, uh, message and, and then p people being called out like this, you know. Yeah, because he, he writes that several years ago at the close of one of the powerful William Brannan campaigns in L.A., I was again blessed with another thrilling experience from the hand of God. For as I, as I was on the platform of one of the city's greatest auditoriums, a young man stood before the audience and began to speak. The white flush of God was upon his face, and I felt the mighty power of the Holy Spirit emanating from his personality as he preached to the people and told them one by one, with one of the greatest and most perfected gifts of God in operation, of their physical need of healing, and it described in detail their diseases, ages, and secrets of their hearts, All those, although those to whom he spoke were strangers to him. The supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit were operating steadily, clearly, and powerfully by the discernment and the word of knowledge. I have sat under his ministry many times since that night, and I have watched the power of God flash over this young preacher, transforming him from the natural into the realm of God's wonder-working, omniscient spirit of truth. I have heard his words grow from the mortal utterances and the immortal gifts of God and roll like thunder of Sinai. I have watched the audience sit under his heavenly spell and I have seen them sway in a moment from laughter to tears. You see, you still do that. Mm -hmm. The laughters and tears. <laughs> well, the tears come from me when they don't laugh. So. <laughs> yeah. But, the, you know, the joy that comes from the Lord has a lot to do with uh, people's healing. Even in the natural world, uh, doctors claim that uh, a comedy or humor uh, aids uh, in healing and all that. So can you imagine what it would do if it was divine humor? Of course, I don't claim that, but um, yeah. uh, I love it when people say that's divine humor. You know, yeah, I don't, exactly. I, I don't it's deny it. You know. As we close tonight, we, we... Oh, you're closing me down over those, that humor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my humor has brought the house down, but I didn't think I was closing down. You know? <laughs> no, actually, it's the children's ministry that's closing us down. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I want us to, to take a moment and pray and, and ask the Lord to help, to just move us into the things that God's doing. Now, the mm. Spirit... The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. And the things that he has done, he will do again, and he'll do them in greater fashion. And we believe with all our heart that he will multiply it amongst a whole generation so mm -hmm. it doesn't have a chance to go into its corruptions. It doesn't go off into tangents. Can you lead us in prayer and just uh, oh, yes. mm -hmm. lead us in that direction? Well, Father, as, as pastor and uh, evangelist, Lord, as your servants, we agree together where two uh, shall agree together as touching anything. Uh, you said it would be done by the Father in heaven. So grant it, Lord. We agree that signs and wonders will return to your church and that uh, there will be a, a great tidal wave of mercy sweep over Los Angeles and uh, and the Central Coast and all throughout the West Coast. And it will be uh, very significant. Mm -hmm. It'll be a tidal wave of your mercy yes. engulfing uh, thousands uh, or millions into the kingdom of God. And Lord, we're giving you praise and glory in advance for this. Yes, Lord. 
And this is not um, a fantasy. It's not just something um, that we've dreamed up. It's something that you have shown us that will surely come to pass. And we're closer to it uh, yes. than we could possibly realize. And thank you, Lord, for raising up young people all over the world uh, as the new um, uh, prophets and uh, evangelists that will uh, cover the earth as the waters cover the sea with your glorious gospel. Bless everyone in this gathering tonight, Lord, mm -hmm. and just bring down the showers of blessing and mercy and, um, and do them with power from on high. Let the latter rain come, Lord, yes, Lord. and let your power be vested in every person that seeks for that power and that infilling and that um, divine ability. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And give us some demonstration of your love tonight. Yes, we'll give you praise and glory for it. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, brother, uh, Pastor, uh, could we just have those that feel that you've come here tonight for a real special touch from God just to come forward where we can see you. I can't see you out there, but if you, you just feel like God has something for you and uh, you're desperate for Him, would you please just come forward and, and stand here? Praise God. Praise God. Well, I can't see these with these glasses, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll bring the lights on. Uh, it is so difficult to, to see you, but I, uh, oh, God wants to do something so special tonight. These old days, uh, uh, people would be standing in the audience praying for a loved one, and uh, because they weren't praying for themselves, uh, they uh, would seem to get something from the Lord before anyone else. And one night there was a little Italian, uh, well, a lady who had an Italian mother, and uh, I forget uh, what nationality her father was, but anyway, she was praying so ardently for her mother. And so I looked out and saw her, her name was Rose Russell. And when the Lord used to reveal a name to me, I'd never forget it, you know. Fifty years later, I'd remember it, uh, but now it's getting a little different. The way I pointed back, and she was um, sitting with a couple of Bible school students, young ladies, and I said, Rose, you just prayed for your mother who's in a wheelchair in Pomona, California. And I think, you know, it was some number on Huntington Avenue. I said, go home. Your mother was just healed. This very minute, an angel appeared to her and healed her. This is what's coming back. And so uh, uh, she uh, took hold of the girl and said, come with me, and she uh, drove to, um, uh, to Pomona and to the house where her mother was staying, and uh, she was living with her mother, or vice versa. And so she rushed in, and her mother was uh, dashing her wheelchair against the closet door and praising God. And she said, Mother, what in the world happened to you? She said, well, I was just looking at the clock and at exactly 9.30 an angel appeared before me and said, you can walk, get up, you can walk. And so you see I'm walking, she was completely healed. And those two uh, young uh, uh, ladies became missionaries. Uh, they were just so impacted by that. So, so you see those things really were real. And uh, Rose Russell uh, supported our ministry uh, uh, from her retirement from the um, uh, telephone company for so many years. And uh, those things were so real. So um, uh, I, I took, how many of you have loved ones you'd like for the Lord to send his uh, word to and, and heal? Is this Tim here? Tim? Yeah, I, I, I was praying about your father and your mother, and I, I know that um, 
uh, the Lord has the best saved for them, the last. And that's, uh, that's on your heart, isn't it? For God to uh, use them like he did in days of old plus uh, and more. Father, I just ask you to send your word to um, uh, the Wakemans tonight. And mm -hmm. Lord, they're so uh, uh, in remembrance of uh, Sergeant, or Lieutenant Cyrus Johnson and A. Allen and these people. Father, I pray that you will um, impart a ministry of youth and a yes. ministry uh, of... Um, of restoration to them like they've never dreamed of and let their latter years be so much greater than that of the former and bless Tim and his wife and uh, his family here in Camarilla, Lord, and help him uh, to follow through with all these things that, um, that are on our hearts. and Just bring a baptism of power yeah, and yeah. faith uh, just like uh, we witnessed in the Allen meetings and we witnessed in all these meetings in the past. In Jesus' name, uh, I pray, Lord, that you'll bless uh, their three children or ever how many they have and make them all to shine in the kingdom mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. I pray in Jesus' yes, name. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Um, did I, I was hoping that a brother that said he might be here tonight named uh, Al. Uh, are you Al, could you just press a little to the forward so I can see you? Um, Al, I'm so glad that you're here tonight because you've been on my heart all day long. And um, our friend Debbie Lemonian had prayed and prayed that you'd come to one of these meetings. And now here you are. But I have some wonderful news for you. The Lord. Uh, has a remake for your life. Uh, Mercy uh, rewrote my life, and Mercy is going to do the same for you. You have been a person that uh, is very serious-minded. Uh, you've never, wouldn't, haven't talked, you haven't told me, so you've been very serious-minded, but you um, have been marked by Satan to be one of the loneliest men on earth. Is that any clo anywhere close to right? If that's right, just lift your hand. Uh, all right, good enough. I don't want to embarrass you. I wouldn't say that unless I have good news for you. But the good news is that uh, God, even tonight, will begin the work of filling you and empowering you with inner peace, inner animation, inner joy. And you're going to know him as uh, you have always wanted to know him, but you have never found him to be that real. And you're a very intelligent person, I can discern that, but you're not satisfied with just uh, making a living uh, and just media, mediocre, media, whatever the word is. So, but the Lord is going to start the process by restoring all of your family. I, I, I see your father and your mother, are, are, I think they're in Taiwan, aren't they, or something like that, yes. Well, uh, does Cerritos mean anything to you? Cerritos, would you wave your hand at these things? Mean things? All right. well, this is the way it used to be in the, the old days. Uh, now, um, uh, I see a vision of a lady uh, that's very important in your life. And her name is Sue or Su Suzanne. Suzanne, is that who? His sister. Her si his, his sister. sister. Uh, the Lord's um, uh, calling is upon her life, and uh, you're going to see her come into um, a wonderful restoration. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, in the um, uh, what do you call it between? Reconciliation. Domestic, uh, uh, domestic reconciliation, right? There's a real serious domestic problem there. And the Lord said He's going to heal that. And uh, I believe she would be um, 30, 32, uh, something like that. All right, good. That, uh, it's coming back. Amen. It's coming back. And yeah. the Lord's going to restore her. All right. Then, uh, uh, I mean, this is uh, Chow. Uh, pardon? 
That's your mom. Well, praise God. She's going to live um, uh, to enjoy uh, a long, is there? That's your dad. <laughs> oh, that, that lung. That's a middle name or something I see in it. Oh, there's a, there's a, what's the first name? Lung is your, isn't that a strange name? I mean, I just felt a strangeness in my lungs. So lung, okay. All right, I, I keep wanting to um, uh, call you Alvin or, is your name? Alvin, Alvin D, Alvin T, Alvin T, uh, what, what's the T? That's my Chinese You what? Chinese initial. Oh. Okay, what is that? Sorry? What is uh, your your middle name? Song, Song Hao. Hao. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, the Lord is, uh, is going to give you an excuse to believe in Him. From this night on, you won't ever need an excuse yeah. for believing in God. Yeah. Salvation is soon. The salvation. You've got a whole a, a large family. And God is going to save every one of them. And let your mother uh, and dad live to see the salvation of the Lord for all your brothers and sisters and see the joy of the Lord for you. And uh, one day, I'm not prophesying a date, but the Lord's going to give you the romance of a century. And you can count on that. And all of your sadness uh, the sadness, the cloud of sadness and loneliness is lifting from you right now. And when you go home, you're going to want to come back here again. There'll be another installment of this when you come back. Hey, this is coming back. Let's praise yeah, the Lord. Praise He's the coming Lord. back. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, it's just, um, uh, Stuart, I had a kind of another vision of a vision in the past uh, something that was birthed in you in Palm Bay or is, is there such a place as that Florida or something was birthing you a hunger for what you have now but there's another hunger in you for what you don't have now but what you're going to have in the next couple of years you're coming into a prominence an international prominence with publications and with uh, recordings that are going all, all over the world and you're going to enjoy uh, life not just with that night uh, program, the God TV, but you're going to be known as someone who has a fresh word from God and a fresh revelation from the Lord. I was going to say that I taught you everything you know but not everything I know but now the Lord's uh, taken over and he's gone beyond anything that you've ever known heretofore and illumining your mind with the light of the Holy Ghost and the revelation. And also uh, I see your sister finding inner peace and inner joy and somehow there's, there's an X right in the middle of uh, uh, an exotic name or something. I mean, yeah, is her, that right? Her or, middle name starts middle with an name. X. Okay. Well, this is just a confirmation that uh, uh, she's going to come in to the joy uh, of her inheritance and of her life. And I send the word to your mom and dad in Holland tonight that they may um, have uh, the love life of the century, as I said to my brother here, and that they may enjoy their latter days more than they ever dreamed of and see all of the family in the kingdom of God and uh, your, your family is going to be known as royalty and God is going to bless them in Holland and uh, oh thank God for that. Yeah. Where is, uh, 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 that's not all, I'll tell you the rest when I get with you, but where is um, uh, my daughter, uh, where is she? What goodness, my, 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 my. Boy, you can really overlook. Uh, yeah, you can overlook uh, an orchid looking for rose, I guess. But anyway, well, of course I know your name is what? Uh, yeah, Marilyn. Okay, and I know your your husband's name is. Uh, uh, no, don't tell me. Yeah, I, I call it. 
Yeah, I called a lady out one time in John Wimber's meeting. It was John Wimber's secretary, and I said, she was hard of hearing, and, and I was too. And I said, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is your, your anniversary, and this is what's going to happen to you. She said, no, this, this, no, this is my anniversary. And you know, that's what I said. And right. I, thought, I said, Sister Marilyn, her name is Marilyn too. And I said, Sister Marilyn, this is your anniversary. And this is what God's going to do for us. No, this is my anniversary. And she thought I was saying birthday. Oh. And so uh, finally she got the message anyway. But Marilyn, uh, and uh, what's your husband's name? Pardon? Glenn. Glenn. Okay. Uh, Glenn, the Lord says that you're not going to retire because even at 65, there's no need to retire. And uh, you, uh, you won't ever get to retirement age. You're going to enjoy success beyond the success that you've now enjoyed. And this is going to be your excuse for remaining active for these coming years is that I'll not retire because there's nothing wrong with my tire. Amen. That's uh, the Lord's kind of humor. And listen, um, uh, Donnie, uh, Donnie, uh, I see her with the Lord, uh, late 30s maybe, uh, but she looks younger. And uh, Tiffany, uh, 30, uh, 32 or something like that, she's with the Lord. She, I see her as beautiful. Uh, see, I've never met her. Uh, She's with the Lord, and the Lord's going to give you happiness. And look what He gave. He gave me for a father. So, all right, gave you me for my daughter. And now, you want to be my son? <laughs> I'd rather have you for my brother, but okay, <laughs> be my son. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? Yeah, He is. He's good. Amen. Um, did Billy the kid come back? Uh, well, I was looking right at you, and I couldn't see you. I was looking over there. Billy, the Lord has a real word for you. It was about the uh, you laying hands on thousands of young people and imparting uh, the gift of revelatory giftings to them and knowing what their calling is. But the Lord is clearing up something so that you will have um, uh, inner peace and joy uh, from now on. There may be struggles, but it's going to be inner peace and joy. And I, I see the name Irene. Is that Irene? Uh, there's something about that. Um, it, it'll come to you. That's, um, but um, Nevada. Uh, has Nevada ever meant anything to you? Uh, Nevada? No, Nevada, the state of Nevada. Oh, Nevada, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, you're going there, uh, but not with my money, all right? So, <laughs> okay. Father, I pray that you'll visit Billy's, um, yeah. Billy's, uh, Billy's life mm -hmm. and his wife and his daughters and his son. Lord, has recently married. I pray you'll visit them and give them the desires of their heart in the loving, adorable name of Jesus. Every one of you that have a lost child or, love, or uh, children, lift your hand, would you? The Father, just heal the sons, the daughters, uh, the children of all of these people represented. Send the uh, dispatch angels to go and, and uh, woo them into yes, the Lord. kingdom yes, of God. Yes, and we got it this night. Lord, you have given little tidbits uh, of um, uh, of your anointing, and I pray that you'll mm. continue to do that, and with more clarity, as I yield myself to you, and as we all yield ourselves yes. to you. And now, Lord, write these names down in your book of remembrance, and be sure to remember them when you make up your jewels, for they are here tonight, and uh, you're overhearing and eavesdropping on them praying for their children. Save every one of them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yes, make this yes, Lord. Yes, the greatest Lord. miracle yes, of this service tonight. Yes, yes, and Father, everyone that has a loved one with uh, cancer of any kind, become the big C in their life and heal the little C. Just kill the little C 
and drive out all forms of cancer, melanoma and the squamous cells and the um, uh, uh, every kind of cell, yes. every kind of description of cancer. Drive it out, Lord, every malignancy. And let us have a foretaste even now of what you're going to do in coming days here at Jubilee and everywhere else that people are here representing. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 And amen. 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 Yeah. Uh, I don't know what in the world this means, but you have a you have a pot full of encouragement for a name. I see P O T T. Do you know someone named Pot? Go encourage that that man. Carry, carry an encouragement to him. Does carry mean anything? You're carrying. This pot of encouragement and blessing. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. Turn to somebody and say something good's going to happen to you and something wonderful yeah. is going to happen to you tonight. Now, I'm going to be praying all week and this is going to get better. So come back. You know, by next week, we hope to have some videos where um, you call people out, like, you know, maybe there's 75 people will be called out one night. We'll get at least show a dozen of those and it builds your faith so high that. Uh, it's built my face so high if I could just get a hold of them. So we'll talk to England today or London, and they are or England, and they're going to find some of those miracles where uh, uh, the power came and knocked out battery operated phone lines for the whole system of the auditorium and knocked out $50,000 cameras. And I wasn't invited anywhere where they used cameras for a long time. It wasn't my fault. It was a surge of power of God. That's coming. Yeah. That's coming. Coming to your children. That's coming to all of us. And um, now I see your, your prayer life is paying off. Your prayer life is paying off, Marilyn and Glenn and all of you. And keep praying, will you? Keep praying for me. And uh, oh, I just want all these things to start happening here. All of them. Amen and amen. And. Uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, barnacles are coming off of me. And uh, you'd be surprised how free you are and how free sailing you can be when the barnacles are off your ship, you know. And uh, I hope by this time next week I'll be in ship shape. Amen. God bless Amen. you. Thank you. Amen. Okay. God bless you. Thank you very much.